Oh, alright. Mm -mm -mm. Myself comfy. Got my mess organized a little bit, somewhat. It's all proud of myself for making all these wires disappear. <laughs> wires from the mic, wires from the webcam, wires from the speakers. And uh, I put them down through the table. No, I didn't put a hole in the table. But as I should have thought of this when I slapped this together, because this board was floating around in the water like crazy, right? And Mr. Impatient Me caught it and put it together. And now the board's starting to shrink, so I'm getting little gaps in between the boards. No biggie, I can fix it up again later, but it paid off actually because now I can. Uh, I dropped all the wires that I have here down through the cracks, so just the plugs come up and plug into the laptop and the speakers, and everything's out of the way, not tangled up. So, there. So, anyways, I had a group text, I believe, a text from a contact that both myself and Nino have. I think Nino texted me this. I haven't texted him back yet. Now, this is going to be a video about. Um, about some of the fires going on in British Columbia and what's going on. I have a lot of friends being affected, directly affected by the fire. I have a lot of friends getting hold of me, phoning me, texting me about the shit show going on with the multiple police officers that were, are up at the fires, dispatched there from the city of Vancouver. Now, everybody's very, very frustrated because Nobody's allowing anybody to help anyone. They're just letting it burn. One friend of mine, Fomi, with direct knowledge that they had a bulldozer and a backhoe working to create safe zones around a one certain neighborhood to protect the homes, which they were successfully protecting. During the night, there was an RCMP car seen on site, and in the morning, all of the motor oil was let out of the equipment onto the ground. Sounds a little, hmm, suspicious, maybe, maybe not, maybe people are jumping to conclusions, but there was, who knows, I don't know who it was. I know that our country did lose a lot of law enforcement and a lot of military over the COVID jab shit. I know for a fact they did fly in those UN military skid bags to beat on our citizens at the peaceful protest in Ottawa. I do know for a fact that the RCMP there, who had the rigs towed out of town, vandalized them. They vandalized them out of town and caused upwards of over $100,000 of damage to those truckers, which they needed to make a living. I do know they did that. And we do have the screenshots, the text, the, uh, the uh, communication, the, the conversations between various RCMP officers during those protests who were joking about the elderly, elderly woman getting ran over by the horse, joking about the high-end accommodations they had, the great meals, the OT, and how they need to put on their jack boots and go in there and beat on the people too. Those were a screenshot and a bunch of our fellow Canadian citizens grew up with some of these idiots and went to school with them and knew who they were and they were getting attacked on social media like you wouldn't believe. So, what I'm saying is there is bad apples. There's bad apples in every human group. I'm not shitting on just the RCMP or police. So, um, also video footage of one RCMP officer in uniform and I think there was at least six or seven other ones in green fatigue style uniform with guns all at a bridge in the Shushwab stopping members of the community from ferrying over firefighting supplies and help to the people that stayed to fight the fires. I stopped them. Uh, on videos, one woman says, so what, we cross that bridge, we're going to get arrested? As the RCMP officer leaning on his car with his arms folded, very casually said, yes. Okay, now if these people were actually a member of the community, there's roughly six or seven people standing there doing nothing. Just standing there manning a bridge to make sure no civilians, no community members went and helped those people with saving their homes. Well, I'm sure one of those losers could have stayed there with the bridge with his patrol car while the other five or six government paid skid bags could have taken all that help and supplies to the people fight the fires. <laughs> right? Who's in charge of those dip shits? Pretty pathetic, right? Pretty pathetic. So anyways, I received this text earlier today, asked me to share. What do I do? I share the voices of the people. So, 
Let's listen to this, shall we? Take from away you will or leave it. Hi Steve, can you help this message get out to everyone? This needs to be told to the public. You can contact this person at, the number is shown, who sent this to my friend George, who is a former RCMP member. He knows I have connections, so he sent it to me. Alright, so the RCMP member sent it to this lady who both Nino and I have as a mutual contact. Here we go. We need to get the story out about what's happening in the shoe swap. That's in southern BC where people's homes are being burnt to the ground. Can you guys please post this everywhere? Send it to everyone you know. Please help us. My name is Steph and my husband Yorn and I own a home at the end of Meadow Creek Road in Salista, BC. The fire department and forestry lit a back burn around 4 p.m. on Thursday, August 17th, knowing there were 30 kilometer winds coming. No news outlet is talking about this. My husband has been monitoring the winds and the Adams Creek fire for weeks. On Tuesday, August 15th, we knew the winds were coming. The fire was approximately 15 kilometers away from us. We don't know who decided to light a backburn, knowing the wind forecast. They lit a 14 kilometer backburn right at our back door and never notified us. My dad, who lives in Kelowna, knew about a quote, out of control backburn, end quote, before we did. They didn't even come to tell us. They notified the locals by posting it on a piece of paper at the gas station. At 8.45 p.m., we saw the fire just over the ridge. And by 12 p.m., it had reached Meadow Creek Road and was in the backyard. Without the back burn, we could have had a whole day to prepare. We did, we did have sprinklers up, water tanks loaded, and generators ready to go. We knew we were pretty much on our own and would not receive much help. The fire department did come down the road and were there briefly. Once they deemed the fire out of control, they left. When the fire came into the valley, we watched it burn up the sides of the mountain due to the humidity dome created with, the, with all the sprinkler and water. The fire department abandoned us. About two hours had passed when some locals came down our valley with rescue and help. I was notified of the fire department I was notified the fire department was sitting in a field having coffee, so I went to get them. When I got there, I asked them to come and help us, told them the situation. One of the firemen told me they wanted to help, but had orders to sit. I yelled at them to get in their trucks and come help us. They said they would. I went back down the road to notify our crew. They were coming. I sat and waited, but no one came. About 15 minutes had gone by, so I went back up the road and found them sitting about one kilometer away. They told me they were assessing the situation. I asked, how could they assess if they couldn't see it? I again asked them to come and help, and they finally did. Everyone ran around putting, out hot, putting hot spots out. We wore water packs and half masks with headlamps for the next three days, making sure our houses made it through. In the initial days after the, quote, super fire, end quote, the locals were able to get water, gas, and supplies. But now, there is a heavy police presence. They have the roads blocked off, saying they are preventing looting. The locals are being told to turn around. Sorry, the locals are being told to return to their homes. They are not allowed to be helping at all. There are spike strips on the roads police blocks everywhere. There are people trying to get essential supplies in such as water, gas, and food by boat. They are being turned away. Police are patrolling the roads and water. They have the gas stations blocked off. We need the real story to get out so we can help. We are more than equipped to help put this fire out, but are being stopped. We need resources such as gas diesel to keep us going. They're trying to starve us out so they can let it burn. My number is 250-509-0400. Please feel free to post my number. I'm willing to talk to anyone who can help. 
What was that for a frustrated cry of absolute frustration, despair, sadness, grief, anger? Communities, it's not just this, but I mean, what's been going on the past few years, various things, doesn't seem that um, community is, has been stripped, is being um, rapidly stripped from us. We're not allowed to have community anymore, are we? Is that, that's what it's looking like anyway, right? That's what it's looking like anyway. And who, who is the human being who sits in a position, however they got it, that thinks their ego actually convinces them that they will decide what's, what's best for our communities. This is wrong. We make our own communities. We live on this ground. We live in these neighborhoods. We know what's best for us and we take care of each other because nobody else is going to, obviously, right? How do we turn this around? How do we make people form community again and start calling the shots again. I do not believe there is another man walking in the face of the earth that can tell me what's best for me. Maybe that sounds odd to a lot of you. Maybe it doesn't. But that's the way it rolls here at this homestead. This home, homestead, my home, and other friends of mine's homes, there isn't a human being sitting in some office in a faraway province or place that knows what's best for me. There isn't. There isn't a man in uniform who knows what's best for me and my community. These people are supposed to be working for the communities, helping the communities, and the communities pay them to do that. The communities do not pay these people to dictate to us what we can or can't do, especially when it comes to helping our fellow humans in our communities. It's such a bizarre machine that's been greased up, ignited, and cut loose. There's so many people in so many positions and they're just dumb, numb doorknobs. They only know to do what they're told to do. Oh well, I know I'm being an absolute idiot and my position right now in law enforcement is absolutely humiliating, but um, I, this is all I can do, sorry. What, you dipshits? You lame, weak losers. Anyone who sits on their ass and stands by and supports poor decisions, which have a negative impact on, on the community, on human beings, especially their lives or homes, you are a loser. You're lost. You're a lost human being. You're losing in a big way. You're a loser. But how do you fight it back? How do you fight back, right? The amount of people I know directly in military officers and police officers who have shared with me directly their disgust for the Canadian government currently today is, is basically running at 100%. <laughs> 100%. How do you turn it around? How do you guys turn it around? How do we all turn it around? This is, this is the same story, not just in Canada, but south of the border too. All my American brothers and sisters with the same shit community has been stripped away. It's time to turn it around. How do you turn it around? I don't know. I'm starting to go on a bit of a rant. I, want to, I don't want to get off uh, the topic being made here. Is this person's voice need to be heard? I'm making it be heard. It's heard. Share it if you feel compelled to. If you're a person of, of military or the law who thinks that this is the wrong message to get out, well, Share me, share, get a hold of me and share my story how to hunt.com and tell me what's the right message. Tell us what you did that was good. Tell us why the decisions are made to block people from helping their neighbors. Spike belts and sabotaging equipment that can fight fires. What's up with that one? What's up with that? Let's hear your side of the story if you're even here. Probably not. Anyway. What I would strongly suggest before what is apparently coming down the pipe in November, what I would strongly suggest to every single human being out there who I can reach is start small. Start small. Get a meeting with your local community. Get your little neighborhood together. However many homes you can. Get it. And no matter what political side of the political line they sit on, it doesn't matter. Get everybody in the same room and let everyone have a voice. Whether you agree with it or not, just let them speak. 
Use your gut instincts to decide what's right, what's wrong. Let everybody speak and come to a community decision. And if that works, make a bigger one. Reach out to the next town. Rent a hall. Get every single human being in that hall and form a community and everybody gets a chance to speak and speak truth. And nobody gets shut down. Everybody gets treated with respect and everybody believes that they're here to support their neighbor. <laughs> okay? And if that's successful, make it bigger. Get the next two towns, three towns together. Make a great big community meeting and everybody gets a voice. And then you start making decisions for yourselves and you see how much power you actually have. And get community back. Get community back. Start helping each other and fighting against this crazy ass shit that's going on. Because it's just, it's out of control. It's out of control. We don't let these beings who are supposed to be in the position to represent our words and our decisions turn it around and decide what's best for us no matter what we think. It's not working. <laughs> it's not working. All right, I'm babbling too much. Consider this shared. I'll be back again shortly.